Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Faith and Friends. We are glad to have you here and glad that Zach Bowers has made it to the middle chair. This is a landmark moment for me. I feel like in this chair, Jennifer's on vacation, right? No, she's not vacationing. No, but she is elsewhere. She is elsewhere. So you are filling in for us and we appreciate having you here, Zach. I'm excited to be here. This is quite the honor. I've only been on this set, what, one or two times? Well, standing normally. For standing <laughs> sometimes. And so this is... <laughs> I'm, I'm taking it all in right now. All right, fair enough. <laughs> but we are going to take a look at what some of you can expect to look forward today on Faith and Friends. Of course, Palm Sunday has passed and Easter is coming up this week. So my interview with Bill Harris puts our focus in the right perspective during this Passion Week. Also an absolutely incredible story about love and death. Pastor Terry Hunt is here to talk about what he and his siblings experienced just a few months ago while officiating his own father's funeral his mother collapsed and died. It's an amazing story that you don't want to miss. Wow, that is something. And we also have some great Fellowship of Christian Athletes news to share and a story from Delphus Jefferson. The banquet is coming as well. Lots to get to to see how God is using FCA. But first, as always, we're going to take a look at our scripture for today. And this is Philippians chapter 3, verses 18, 21. For as I often told you before and now tell you again, even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of, cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction, their God is their stomach, and their glory is in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will, str will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. A lot there, guys, but how encouraging that, that hope we have that this is not our home, that our citizenship belongs elsewhere, and that we can look forward to that someday. That Gaither reunion we saw all day Sunday, the Gaither mm -hmm. Marathon. There's so many stories about abiding in heaven and our glory coming with him. We do have that to look forward to. Very exciting days ahead, but to live is Christ, to die is gain. We're here to live for Jesus right now. You know, in a verse that really is, I think, impactful right now during this Easter season because we waited three days for Jesus to arise, and he did after being cross, uh, crucified on the cross for us some 2,000 years ago. Now we wait for his return once more as he has given us the eternal triumph over sin if we put our faith in him. Well, we have a story today that exemplifies the entire idea of citizenship in heaven and Jesus' ability to transform our lowly bodies to be like his. Now, can you imagine losing both of your parents within days of each other? That's what happened for Pastor Terry Hunt. In fact, his mother collapsed, passed away during his father's funeral. But God can use all things for good. Here's Dancy with a very special interview. Pastor Terry Hunt joins me now from Bluffton. And, and Pastor, you have a story that um, is hard to believe. Yes, it, it will is. break many hearts, but it mm -hmm. will also give us reason to celebrate. Yes. Um, and I'm so glad that you've mm -hmm. joined us. Thank you. It's good to be here. You, um, your life really changed uh, at the end of mm -hmm. 2013, yes. and you're still as we discussed mm -hmm. going into this, reeling a little bit from all the events mm -hmm. leading up to today. Mm -hmm. So um, can you take us back to 2013, mm -hmm. um, December really is the yes. month where yes. this all happened? Well, uh, December, uh, Christmas Eve is when it all began. Uh, we got a phone call. They were all coming, all my family is coming to my house. We have four, let me, let me just go back a little bit. We have, I have four brothers, there's yes. five of us. And our names are Larry, Gary, Terry, Harry, and Jerry. Four of us are in the ministry, and four of us are pastors. Well, they were all coming to my house in Bluffton for Christmas. It's usually the annual, annual deal. So Christmas Eve, uh, we got a phone call about 1.30 in the morning, Christmas Eve, and they had taken my father to the hospital in Toledo with a heart attack. They weren't sure exactly what was happening, but that's what it turned out to be, really a massive heart attack. He had not been sick his heart entire life. This, he had never been in the hospital like this at all. And um, so one thing led to another, and uh, they, they said he wouldn't live much long at all because of the condition of the heart and the blockages, and they couldn't do stints, so they had to do an open heart surgery thing, and, um, and which they did the, the day after Christmas, uh, the 26th, and they gave him an 80% chance of success because we, we had prayed, we had, my dad had been, uh, and maybe you'll get into this later, I don't know, but um, he, he, he'd been a great singer, he had made a record way back in 1953, you know, mm -hmm. 
Um, so we, were, we had gathered around his bed and we were praying and, and the next day things improved so greatly that they said, we're going to do surgery and we believe there's an 80% chance of success. So we said, yes, yeah. you know, we're for life, you know, we're for life. In which this surgery was successful. And then um, about 20 minutes later, they came back and said, something happened, crashed, you just passed away. Just died on the spot. And you were all there. We were, the whole entire family, all of us, all the, fa the entire family, grandkids and great grandkids, they were all, we were all here. And he's, such a, a, he's such a strong man. I mean, yes. physically, he, mm -hmm. he really looked very strong and, as you said, was not suffering much up until that no, time. No, um, no, no. Veteran of World War II, wasn't he? Yes, he was, but that was really not, um, he really, he, yeah. He didn't he, like to talk no, about he, that. No, yeah. I mean, he really was not, in a, he was in about a year mm -hmm. and at the end of the war, so it really wasn't a part of his life. But he I served mean, it was our, our yes, country, he did. which is awesome. Yes, he did. Yes. All right, so then yes. um, you mm -hmm. tried to recover from the shock, and, and as yes. pastor, well, yeah. you were called into duty then as well yes. because um, mm -hmm. you held his memorial service. Yes, we have my other three brothers who are in the ministry, we're all going to officiate this funeral mm -hmm. and uh, according to what my mom wanted and we were all officiating it. It's just mm -hmm. really an incredible time. I'm sure. Church was filled. Uh, my brother Jerry pastors Word of Truth Christian Center in Bowling Green, Ohio. So we were held, holding it there. That seats about 300, 350. The sanctuary was packed and filled to capacity at, the t at this time. My mom was sitting up by the casket and the people were coming in and they were had about 10 more people or so and then all of a sudden uh, at that moment, she passed out at my dad's funeral. You thought fainted, probably, or? Yes, we thought at first she had fainted, uh -huh. just passed out. But then it was moments later that we realized that actually she had passed away. There were doctors and nurses there that came. And, and so she was amazing. there in the midst of all of these people who were yes. celebrating your father's life yes. and, and dealing with the mm -hmm. loss. Um, yes. And then your mother passed away. My mom passed away at the funeral. It, it was like, you know, it was the most amazing thing we could have <laughs> ever seen. What it's was it, What was your emotion, though? Honestly, what did you feel at that time? Like, this could wow. not be happening yes. to me or to... You know, it wasn't, family? you know, it was uh, a sad thing, but we knew that they were together. We knew, and then, you know, they, we knew that uh, she was with my dad. And it was the greatest thing that could ever have happened to her. We're all, I mean, it's wonderful. You know what? I mean, it's I, a blessing. Yes. Hallelujah. We're, yes. we're left, but my goodness, um, they had only been apart in their whole entire life for about five, six days, and that was the longest period of time. Do you believe, you know, we have heard of stories similar to this where, where spouses die within just, you know, yes. a day, hours of each other from a broken heart? Do you believe that that could be? You know, I think, um, oh, different thoughts on that. Uh, I, I suppose, yes, I, I know, it, I would think so. It's out of her, the love that she had for her husband, you know. Married for 66 years, knew each other since they were four years old. And, um, and so. it is, it's, it's one of those times, I'm sure, where um, the human part of you is, is mourning their loss. Yes. But mm -hmm. the spiritual side of you mm -hmm. knows that yes. they are in some place much greater than we can possibly oh, yeah. imagine. Yes. And, you know, not everybody who dies goes to heaven. That is just a, a myth that's out there. But when you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, they are. You do. And uh, they have. And, and they're they together. Their it's life. just wonderful. Yeah. Now, they're overarching. My dad's and mom's overarching purpose in life was to establish a godly heritage with their children and, and grandchildren, which they ha indeed have. Yeah. This has been an amazing story. And it just seems to go on and on. Amazing. So as, um, as a pastor and yes. as now the son of parents that, mm -hmm. that have passed on in the way that, you know, this mm -hmm. all transpired, if there's someone out there right now who is dealing with the, the mourning of a loved one, how do you provide, what can you say to them that, that will get them out of this darkness and this gloom? Well, the, the, the answer, you know, we always say Christ is the answer, and we see it on I-75 down there, you know, mm -hmm. and that really is, that really is. Mm -hmm. Jesus is our support. The Bible says he has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And that word sound mind means balance. He sustains us in the times of crisis, in the times of tragedies like this. 
It is the Lord who keeps us. He is more than just a coping mechanism. There are a lot of coping mechanisms out there that people go to that are not good, but they go to them because they work temporarily. Temporarily. And it feels like they're working. And, and for some, that's all they need is just a feeling. But nothing's really happening. With Christ, with Jesus, putting our, our life in His hands, calling upon Him, He sustains us. And that's where we get our strength. That's, that's the only way. That, that's I the know. only way you can make it through. It's Absolutely. Anything. There's nothing else. Because there's a hope. Christ gives us a hope. The world mm -hmm. does not give us hope. It takes away that hope. Is it okay to grieve, though? It's okay to grieve. Grieving is a part of it. Absolutely. Of course, we know Jesus cried. <laughs> the, that's right. At the tomb of Lazarus. That's right. Weeping and crying is, is fine. I mean, man alive, yes. That's mm -hmm. right. So I, I think it's so neat that so many of you went into the ministry. And as yes. you said, your parents mm -hmm. wanted to leave a legacy. Yes. Um, and and mm -hmm. what a tremendous legacy they have mm -hmm. left with all of it's you amazing. boys. And, and how mm -hmm. about the grandkids and, and so forth? Yes. How are they all doing? They're doing great. Uh, they're involved in, um, in their churches and ministries. The thing with my... All of our, all the kids are saved, five boys, and all the grandkids, and we're moving at the great-grandchildren, every single one of them, the entire family, serving God. And when, when my father was in the hospital, we gathered around his hospital bed, and one of the songs that he would sing, and I grew up with him singing songs in church, and, and each pastor that he was with, he was the kind of his right-hand guy. It's kind of like a George Beverly Shea and a Billy Graham uh -huh. kind of thing. You know, every Sunday my dad sang. Yeah. One of the songs, great song, old song was Until Then, you know. My heart will go on singing until then with joy I'll carry on. And we would sing that around my dad's bed there in the hospital. It was fantastic. It's just amazing. The nurses there standing watch this amazing family that I have a, a, an honor to, yeah. to be a part of. And they were in tears. It was just, uh, and that's the way Christians die. Oh yeah, what a way you know. to usher him yes. out yeah. of this life, you know? I yeah. mean, and um, I wanted to share with, my, with you, my father-in-law, yes. when he passed away, we were standing around his bed and our pastor arrived just in time yes. to say the Lord's Prayer and he took yeah. his last breath during the Lord's yes. Prayer. And, yeah. you know, I consider those the miracles that are mm -hmm. happening mm -hmm. right now. Yes. You know, and, and we may not always recognize them as such, but I do believe yes. that's, that's what yes. that was, yes. you know? And, Absolutely, um, yes. So it's amazing. If, time. if there's something you could leave our, our viewers with right now, what message would you give them? This is what I would say, what my father would say. When I was, I was one of the last ones to leave his room before the surgery. And, I, and if I can keep this as brief, I'm mean, as a pastor, I can talk a little while. You know, I'm, I'm sorry. But, he, you know, he taught us this, faithfulness, and truth and steadfastness and don't quit faithfulness steadfastness truth and finish don't strong, quit right? finish strong and yes and by god's mercy and grace you know when he looked at me in my in my eyes i saw him i said we're gonna we're, see you in the morning you know we'll, we'll see you and we will keep on preaching the gospel yeah and i we're gonna finish stronger than what we began there you go. We, I will finish stronger than the, when I began. Wonderful. And I've been around a little bit, but so we're going to finish stronger. You're doing for it. For the kingdom of God. You're doing it. For the gospel it. of Jesus Christ. Pastor Terry yes. Hutt, thank you so very much thank for being with for us. Thank you for having me here today. All right. Okay. Back to you. Wow, what an incredible story. Thank you, Nancy. Well, I am privileged to visit students pursuing their faith in Jesus on a weekly and soon daily basis with my role in Fellowship of Christian Athletes. And during the winter, I had the chance to spend the morning with Delphus Jefferson's FCA group and share a message on forgiveness. In this OIO Faith on the Field segment, I found that the Wildcats are having plenty of fun with their faith. I really look forward to FCA every week. I mean, it's a time to come spend time with people who believe the same thing as you, and it's just nice to share with God before school starts. It's a fun time when everyone can get together and have some fun and also learn God's Word, and it's just a great way to start your day. The Wildcats are divided into three different teams at the beginning of the school year, and then each Friday they compete in different crazy activities thought up by coach and teacher Josiah Stober. A lot of people get here because of the game time. I mean, it's a time when we all look like idiots, and Mr. Stober picks the nice games that make us look dumb. <laughs> 
Do you talk about it then the rest of the day, kind of? Yeah, whoever looks the most stupid, people like to share about it. <laughs> Those crazy games then usher in a time to hear a lesson from the Bible, and God has been teaching the students different things that can apply to their lives individually. He's really been teaching me to forgive people, like you said today. We've talked about that a lot and some other groups too. It's a struggle for me, but I've really been working on it. Looking forward to college and deciding what I want to do with my life. God's really been there and I've had to talk to him a lot about what he really wants me to do this year. And it's just been a really good year for me. And an amazing ending to the story, Kennedy's SUV was broadsided a few weeks ago when she was going to pick up her sister from dance class. She walked away unharmed. God is indeed good. Well, speaking of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, the annual FCA Spring Banquet is coming Sunday, April 27th at 6 p.m. here in Lima at Grace Evangelical Community Church. Former Michigan State linebacker Chris Norman will be the keynote speaker. Plus, we'll honor FCA Athletes of the Year from different schools and different huddles. Dinner tickets are $15 for a chicken dinner. Adults, uh, 10 for students, I should say. Proceeds do help District 8 FCA. You can email me at alinch at wtlw.com or call us at the station to get tickets. Come be in a part of an encouraging night highlighted by Norman, who had the chance to play pro football but opted for a higher calling. John Newton. He's the author of Amazing Grace. In his theology of a calling, he said that it should be to accompanied with an earnest, warm desire. An earnest, warm desire. And literally preaching the truths of God, heralding the gospel, especially in a place like the city of Detroit. This is something that consumes my thought. Um, it consumes the things that I do. My whole life is built around now and even the way that I plan to exercise some things in the future is completely built around preaching. It's completely built around evangelism. Uh, Paul said, woe to me if I do not preach the gospel and that is exactly how I feel. Uh, so with that being said, I know this is something that I must do and I simply want to be obedient to God uh, with the burden and the charge that he has placed on my life. Um, and there are some other things that go into that. Um, you could talk about the fact that um, I, I just went into the scriptures because that is the ultimate source. I, I talked to other believers in the church. I, I witnessed the Lord do some things providentially to sort of point me into a specific direction. But at the end of the day, uh, this is something that not only do I want to do, but I feel like I have to do. And if that is the case, then I want to be obedient and follow my Lord wherever he would take me. You can see more of Chris Norman later this month at Grace Community Church. Well, we speak a lot of Jesus' death on the cross during this season because it is a good news of salvation, the sacrificial lamb. But even more than just the forgiveness of our sins, his death gave us access to God unlike ever before. Where there was before a barrier between us and God, there is now an open door. Where there is a curtain separating us from the throne room, we are now invited to be directly in the presence of God. In his latest teaching, Bill Harris talks about the access we have to our Creator and what it means for our daily walk with God. Bill, let's talk about something that we really take for granted, I think, often um, in the society and the way that we've been raised in the church, which is the divine access we have to our Savior and to our Creator, mm -hmm. something that has not always been there. That's true. When you look at Old Testament times, that what the priest had to go through, I mean, once a year going into the temple to offer a sacrifice and he was in God's presence. And of course, if he was not living a holy, righteous life, he, life, he would be struck dead right there inside right. the Holy of Holies. But now uh, when Christ drew his last breath and said it is finished, across town there was, a, there was an earthquake and across town the veil inside the temple that separated where the presence of God was in the Holy of Holies and the outer court, that veil was torn in two. So there became great significant access to God other than just that priest once a year. Mm -hmm. Now the Spirit of God dwells on the inside of us and we have a marvelous life because of it. Right. So what does that mean for us? Well, that, that means in terms of the access that you can be anywhere, drop down on your prayer bones as I often <laughs> say, and, and be in communication with God. I mentioned in the message how that when I was in television news, uh, I used to go to the White House once in a while, and there you're before the, the leader of the free world, and there's a lot of checks that you have to go through, security checks obviously, yeah. to get into the White House. And so it takes some doing, but quicker than you can get in the White House, Zach, if you drop down on your prayer bones, you are ushered in to the throne room 
for an immediate audience, immediate audience with the creator of the universe. You mm -hmm. talk about direct access to the creator of the universe. The angels usher you into that. And that's the clout that we have in heaven that we yeah. don't even realize or sometimes we don't even use to its full capacity. Well, let's take it back one real quick, one moment, and look at what it exactly took for us to, to be given that access. You reference in your teaching Matthew 27, 50, which says, Then Jesus shouted again, dismissed his spirit, and died. Yeah. And look, the curtain secluding the holiest place that you were just talking about in the temple was split apart from top to bottom, and the earth shook, and yeah. the rocks broke. And that, 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 that's when that veil, which was separating the, uh, the presence of no God. Which was no small, small curtain. That no, it wasn't. About. This yeah. isn't a, a lightweight curtain. It was. isn't. When you run <laughs> the research on that, you know, I used to think it was a little sheer right, thing. Right, right, right. But you run the reference on it. It's a very thick one. And I, I do know, but just can't remember how thick it is. Uh -huh. But there, there, that is symbolic of God's desire to get to us and, to, and for us to have access. It's, it's, it's like God will move heaven and earth to get to the very people he mm. created. Isn't this marvelous? Fascinating. The, 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 it's, it's a mystery, the kind of love that he has for us, to be willing to give his own son so that his own creation could have a relationship with him. Phenomenal. Yes, it is. So what would you say, how do, how do we speak to those who maybe aren't comfortable approaching God? Maybe just prayer life has not been something they've grown up yeah. with. The idea of access to a divine creator is kind of out there a little <laughs> yeah. bit. How do we approach that? Is it, is it just that simple? What you don't do is say that, well, I'm afraid if I go to God, he's going to be standing there waiting with a baseball bat uh, to club me down right. and say, you know, it's about time you got here. Right, right. He's not going to be that way at all. He's going to have open arms to welcome you. And he is so loving and so forgiving. He's just glad for the mere fact that you took the time to come to him. And the thing I read one author say once is that when you, when you take that access and you go into his presence, then you begin to realize how wonderful it is. Mm. It leads you to go back again and again and again. It kind of feeds on itself. Right. Before you know it, you've got a real habit built up here. And I tell people, relate to it in terms of your body clock. If you're a morning person, that's a good time to go to him. Yeah. If you're a nighttime person, if you're a night owl, maybe that's your best time to really spend quality time with him. Use your body clock. Right. Yeah. Well, we referenced a few weeks back discussing the alone time needed to spend with God. And this goes lo right alongside yeah. that. Yeah. And good advice there that you mentioned about taking the time of day that is maybe best for you. But how true is it that people are going to see a change in their lives, that they take that time to spend with God and take that access that they have, you're going to gain an inner peace. Yes. And it's going to affect your outer life as That's well. That's the key right there, I think, Zach, is that the inner peace is what helps you. It doesn't mean that you won't have any more problems right. in life. But this inner peace is what's going to give you the strength to go through those problems. And you maintain your own sanity because you, that, that peace of God surpasses all mm. understanding. And that's what we really need to help us to cope in day-to-day -day life, the peace and the direction of God. Thank you, Zach. Some exciting updates we have for you in our Spring to Life campaign. As it continues, we're more than halfway to our goal of $50,000. We first want to thank God for His guidance and provision. Of course, He is the giver of all good things. We thank you for being used by God and allowing Him to use your resources by partnering with us. Some of those folks have already partnered with us. Kathy from Van Ord, Danny from Upper Sandusky, Robin from Lima. We thank you. And you may be wondering, why is TV44 so important? Well, according to local businessman Tom All, so many people have come to know Christ thanks to TV44. Our community is a better place because TV44 is here. Certainly we agree with Tom on that. Together we are reaching others for Christ. We thank you for your tax deductible donation today or in the weeks to come as we continue to think spring during the Spring to Life campaign. Well, Easter is this Sunday. Yeah. We encourage you to worship in the church of your choice. There are quite a few special celebrations taking place in the area. And if you don't have a church home, possibly you'd consider attending one of these. Ada's First United Methodist Church will hold Easter services at the ONU English Chapel at 7 a.m. and 10 a.m. The Nicewanger Performing Arts Center in Van Wert is the location for Lifehouse Church Easter service, which starts at 10 a.m. And if you're looking for something fun and creative, perhaps, St. Stephen Orthodox Church in Lima is planning a candlelight service at 11 a.m. and then a potluck at 1, wow. which includes, Andy and Mark, karaoke, karaoke and dancing, followed by a special reading of the gospel in several languages at 3.30. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. For more information on those events, contact St. Stephen Orthodox Church in Lima. 
Well, a quick moment now to remind you that you can contact us anytime with thoughts, ideas, prayers. You can find us on Twitter at Mark Hoots 44, Andy Lynch 44, Jen Beck 44, or Bauer Z. That would be for Zach Bowers. That's you can also connect with Andy and Jennifer through Facebook. Remember, you can always call or email us with your prayer requests. Our prayer line is 419-339-3000, or you can email prayer at WTLW.com. For extra encouragement, check out the website, WTLW.com, for Andy's Points of Life devotional or Jennifer's One Minute of Inspiration, which, if you want to read it two or three times, might make it three minutes of inspiration. <laughs> and then if you need those three minutes, then definitely go for it. Yeah. Why don't you have a 44 on the end of your Twitter name, Zach? Uh, maybe I should add a 44. If I get two more followers... From this show, I will get a 44. We already follow you. <laughs> we'll talk about this later. <laughs> I'm going to have to create something to follow Zach with. It's almost time to say goodbye, but wanted to take one more opportunity to thank you for your support during Spring to Life's campaign. I'm feeling springy. Does that mean you're compressed and retracting? And I was thinking more of angel food cake. You know, it's, okay. It's I'm feeling springy, too. In you're the always true way back. because of the springtime outside. It truly is our desire here at TV44 to share the incredible message of new life in Christ with as many as we can. And we love being able to do that mission work with you. Together, we are encouraging the saved and seeking to save those who do not yet know Christ. We want to say thank you to some of the many churches who are partnering with us during this campaign. Calvary Evangelical Church, Olive Branch Church of God, First Assembly of God, First Christian Church, DuPont Church of the Brethren, we truly appreciate each and every one of you. We certainly do, and there's still time to join us. If you haven't during the Spring to Life campaign, secure donations can be made at WTLW.com, or you can give us a call, 419-339-4444. There's always the automatic deduction program. Mm. You can get signed up with somebody here at the station, and we'll just have it deducted from your checking account each month. So that You can also have it set up with your credit card as well. That's right. We don't forget. You don't forget. Nobody forgets. <laughs> now we're going to leave you with our scripture today, Philippians 3:18 through 21. For as I have often told you before and now tell you again even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction, their God's their stomach, and their glory is in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious bodies. Tell those who don't know who, who, whose God is their stomach, bring them to church this week. Let them know what Easter is all about. And maybe we can provide some, some hope and encouragement today we want to leave you with because at times this world can seem dark and it can bring us down and we can think why do we even have to endure this life but we can take and find hope in the fact that we do have citizenship elsewhere and we will be going there um, ultimately. There's no day darker than Good Friday mm. when Jesus died on the cross. But the good news is, and the good news we continue to share is that he rose. He rose again mm. and will return triumphantly to the earth. So let's keep that in mind throughout this week as we celebrate Palm Sunday on Sunday, Good Friday on Friday, and then Easter next Sunday. We do have the ultimate triumph over sin and death through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Happy Resurrection Day.